Okay, we have our tan nice integral. This one was sent to be by two my. We've got the integral with one over b times the integral from zero to one, one minus x to the b over one minus x dx. Okay, at first I didn't really think this was a video because I felt like I had done this before. My mistake was actually I was thinking about when I had something like instead of the x there, I had e to the x. And now that case is actually a little different because what I wanted to do is just kind of split this in half here on the minus sign, create two integrals. One would be one over one minus x, the other one x to the b over one minus x. The trouble with doing it that way is that each integral is separated like that, they're each gonna be divergent. So that's gonna be a problem. So what I wanna do instead on this is let's leave this all together. And what I wanna notice is if we just kind of, kind of create a one somewhere, what we have here, one over one minus x, this is perfectly set up right here for us to use the geometric series formula. If we just look at one over one minus x, this is gonna be the same thing as the sum from n equals zero to infinity of x to the n. Now we do have an important condition on this for this to converge. We need our x value to be, or the absolute value of x to be less than one. But in this case here, that's gonna be no problem because our integral is going from zero to one. Technically you have a problem at one, but with an integral, we don't really care what happens at the endpoints. We just kind of think about the one as if we're approaching one. So what I can do is actually, let's just take this right here. We can kind of plug this back into our integral for the one minus, for the one over one minus X part. So we're gonna have this thing in front and then we'll write this as one minus X to the B here times this series. And then from here, this right here has no dependency on N. So you can think of it kind of like a constant with respect to the series and I can just multiply this in so we'll multiply that in, but because we've got the minus sign, let's break it into two sums. So the first one, we'll just be multiplying in the one. So we'll just basically be getting back the same thing of just X to the N. And then for the second one, we'll have the one with the X to the B multiplied in. So this is gonna become, over here, this will become X to the N plus B, just with exponent properties, because we've got the same base here. But now I have this all within the same integral. Let's actually separate this into two integrals. So what I can do is, so for this first one, we'll just have the x to the n. Let me see if I have enough space here. And then we'll distribute in the one b. We already had a minus sign here, so we'll distribute in one b and we'll create an integral right here. And then from here, let's just swap the order of the integration and in the series in each of these. We're okay to do it. We already determined we've got absolute convergence over here. So we'll do this swap. And the reason for doing this is just look at each of these integrals where this n is just a constant, and then over here, n plus b is just a constant. So in each of these, we can just use power rule and evaluate, and these aren't gonna be too bad. Let me just clean up the board and get a little space. Okay, now let's just do both these integrals here. I think I'll do it off to the side and see how this goes. So here we have the integral from zero to one, x to the n. We just need to use power rule. We get x to the n plus one over n plus one evaluated from zero to one. When you plug zero and this is just zero, so you plug one in here and you just get one over n plus one. Now for the second one, basically the same kind of thing here, x to the n plus b, just a slightly different constant. We integrate it with power rule, n plus b plus one over the same constant, n plus b plus one, evaluated from zero to one. Again, the zero is nothing. You plug in one here and we're gonna have just one over n plus b plus one. So we'll plug what we found back into our sum here. So then this one right here is just gonna be our one over n plus one. And then for the second one, same kind of thing, one over n plus b plus one. And then from here, all I wanna do is let's see if we can get a little simplification on this because we're getting close. Let's put these two together. We'll kind of factor out the one over b, bring it together into one sum now. And then we'll have this just one over n plus one minus one over n plus b plus one. And then from here, what I wanna do is let's get a common denominator and see if we can push these together. So what I can do is here on this one, I can multiply by one, multiplying by n plus b plus one, doing the same thing in the numerator. And then for this one, sorry, I know it's a little crowded here. I'm gonna multiply in n plus one, multiply in n plus one here. So then when we put these together with the common denominator, what's gonna happen is, notice the n's are gonna cancel, the ones are gonna cancel, and now we're just left with b, common denominator, which is n plus one times n plus b plus one. But now b is just a constant with respect to this series, so I can bring this up front, but that b is just gonna cancel with this b right here. And so we just have a one left in the numerator. And then one last thing I can do to clean it up, you could probably leave it like this, but just kind of try to make it a little neater. We can actually do an index change on this. 
If you're a little bit nervous about doing an index change, you could kind of do it like a substitution, like change the variable to k, do something like substitute like k equals n plus one. It's just that it's not really necessary to do that. So what I'm gonna do is do it on the fly. And what I'll do is, what you can do is if you just change, if I subtract one on the n right here, I just need to add one right here. So what's gonna happen for the index change, we go from zero to one right here, and then rewriting this, if you think of putting n minus one in here, n minus one plus one, those become a n plus zero, so we'll just write that as n, and then subtracting off the one here, we just get n plus b, and so for my final solution, this we have the sum from n equals one to infinity of one over n times n plus b. Okay, there you go, good one today. Thanks again to 2 for sending me the problem. Thanks everyone for watching, have a good day.